from Markdown Entertainment, and uh, we're doing a new segment called the Markdown Breakdown. Um, basically, that's where we're going to be going over new products, uh, hobby trends, sports in general, uh, and we're going to have a, maybe like a weekly or t twice a week show uh, where we go over these things. Um, for our first segment, we're going to go over a question that uh, I actually get quite a bit and, uh, and it ties into to one of the main things that I do with uh, Markdown Entertainment, and that is, what is a box break? Um, you know, if you feel kind of embarrassed asking that question, don't, because I get it all the time. Um, you know, people who have been collecting for a few days, people who have been collecting for years, uh, it's kind of been an internet thing. It kind of caught on on eBay, and then eBay wasn't too big on it because of uh, the possibility of some people walking home with nothing on some of these box breaks, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, but uh, it's kind of carried on through Facebook, through Breakers.net, um, or Breakers TV, um, and through a whole bunch of other uh, online outlets. Um, a lot of the all the big stores do it, all the big online stores. Um, and then there's a lot of people who, they're just, they're big breakers. They, they break uh, tens of thousands of dollars of product a week. Um, or you can have a guy like me that, you know, breaks a, maybe a few thousand dollars a month worth of stuff. Um, when you're doing a box break, you're basically starting off with something like this. And uh, ending up with this, pretty simple, right? You see the stack of, sort of uh, cards that I kind of piled towards the camera next to me. Uh, I made this easy on myself. I'm doing this after I just did a box break, so that way I have some examples to show you as I, as I do this talking. Um, so basically, a box break is when you take a sealed box, sealed boxes, or uh, even whole case and more and you break them down um, as a group um, you know the term group break is another another t term that you can use in there um, basically you just rip open the product and you do it all together uh, to keep it honest uh, most guys will stream it live so they'll use uh, an app uh, or some other platform that you are watching it as it happens. And we'll talk a little bit more of that later too. Um, there are two main types of breaks. Random team breaks or pick your team breaks. Uh, there's other breaks out there, uh, gimmick type breaks such as uh, pick your player. That's actually one of the first breaks I did was um, I, I got all the Masahiro Tanaka's out of uh, 20 boxes of uh, 2014 Bowman. Um, it was a lot of Tanakas. And um, we did a break actually based off of fantasy statistics, uh, and we divided up the hits a certain way. Um, so I don't know if we invented the fantasy break, but uh, I, I've never seen anybody else try it. Uh, they're coming back this fall. So, uh, um, But your main types of breaks, uh, the probably the pick your team break is... Uh, maybe slightly more popular uh, depends on who you who's the breaker uh, usually there's a set price based on the team's expected value there's a, there's a, some guys out there that'll do flat rate um, for all the teams and then you're basically scrambling or they'll do uh, pick one get one random which throws both of them together um, but basically a team like say the Padres or the Brewers which you know right now uh, most sets, uh, you're, you're not expecting much out of as far as uh, star power potential. Um, so what you end up getting is you get that team on the cheap, whereas another team like, say, the Dodgers, who this year uh, have Kenta Maeda, Corey Seager as rookies, um, guys who are prospects like Julio Urias, um, those teams will cost you a little bit more. Uh, Mets, Yankees, they always have, you know, players who are prominent, uh, especially with the Mets rising to the, uh, to the World Series last year. Uh, guys like Noah Syndergaard are now a household name. 
not just a throw in on a train. Um, and uh, basically you're looking for star power and you're looking for rookie power at these sets because if you're going to pay extra, you're going to want some kind of a return on that. Um, random breaks are generally breaks where you're paying the same price for whatever team you get. And uh, they'll use, usually they'll use random.org. Um, there's a few um, things that they have out there that can uh, give you a uh, unbiased randomization of, uh, of a set of data. Uh, so basically your name would go in and then it would end up corresponding next to a team name. Um, so the benefit to a random break is, you know, let's say all teams are $30.00. And uh, you get, you know, the, the Yankees, which in a pick your team might be like $75. Well, then you made out on the deal. Uh, if you get, you know, like the Brewers or the Padres and they were like a uh, $10, $15 team, then, uh, you know, that's the risk you take. But uh, depending on the type of random break, a lot of them can be high risk, high reward type breaks. Um, often they're high end breaks. Uh, and when they're random. So I mean like your your fifteen hundred dollar boxes of flawless, um, your uh your cases of uh, immaculate, uh, you know, things like that. Those are ones where, you know, guys are looking generally to flip cards, um because the guys who collect certain teams uh know that their team may not get a player uh, when there's only three cards, seven cards, even ten cards in the box. Um, now, whether you get a big team or not, in any kind of break you do, you never know what you're going to get. Uh, I know we did a break not too long ago. The Padres, which were like the cheapest team on the board, um, there was uh, 2016 Donruss in there. And uh, yeah, the San Diego Chicken autograph relic popped up. So that was like, you know, one of the big, you know, hits of the break. And it was your, you know, your cheapest team. And I don't remember how the, the big teams did, but let's say the Angels, you know, didn't get anything. There wasn't any big Mike Trouts or anything like that. Um, you know, that's the way it goes. Again, just like buying a pack or a box, um, a, a box break is uh, totally, you know, a, uh, a luck of the draw type of thing. Um, as far as when you're looking at a break, the player is the key thing, especially pick your team. Um, what you are looking at is not just is the player there, but how often does he show up? For example, um, when a player shows up in multiple subsets, there's going to be more of them because, you know, that subset could have 299 in one, 299 in the other, and, you know, uh, 199 in the other. And this isn't even counting the parallel sets, but just the, you know, the base subsets by themselves. Um, I want to say Inception, Corey Seager is in like three or four different subsets. Yo Mankata is a, um, you know, maybe maybe a bigger dollar value guy. But he's only in one subset, and he's in a limited on another number to like 25 or something like that. So Mankata is a much tougher pull than Seeger, and uh, Seeger is still a high-demand card. So that would drive the value of the Dodgers higher up on a pick-your-team, um, whereas Boston would still be up there because Mankata is in the set to begin with, but you're not going to have that repetition factor uh, his autograph is going to be a little more scarcer. Um, what do you get out of a box break? Well, everybody's a little different on that too. Um, some guys play just for hits. So like we just did a, um, a five box break. Uh, three of them were cards and two of them were memorabilia. So we'll talk about that in, in a minute as well. But um, So if you're just playing for hits, well, th this is all that's going to go out. Now, some people will throw in all the inserts. So then this is what's going to go out. And then uh, others will throw in the rookie cards. And um, guys like me, we'll, uh, we'll put in the whole thing right there. So I'm, a, I'm the type of guy every card ships. Um, 
what happens to those guys that only give the hits? Well, some of them, they resell your base cards or, or even your insert cards and things like that. Because uh, generally, they will most of the time price it a little bit lower, knowing that only the hit cards are going going to go out. Uh, maybe they'll only look to break even on the break, and then uh, they'll they'll recoup their their time and investment in you by uh, getting rid of those other cards. Uh, others, um, you know, they're they're just looking to ship out the hits. They're looking to save themselves on time. But they may be nice and they may be donating the base cards uh, to like a charitable group or something like that. I know I ship everything, but I don't necessarily break when I'm 100% full. So sometimes I'll, I'll sell out. Other times I'll have one or two teams. Um, you know, sometimes it'll be a tough break and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take on like five or six teams myself. I have fun in this too. Um... And a lot of times I'll donate, you know, base cards that I have to like, um, for example, our church, um, you know, they'll, they'll give them away as like prizes for like vacation Bible school and things like that. Um, so, you know, that's one of the things I'll do with them. Um, other ones I'll keep, you know, it, it depends on what it is and, and it's pretty much the breaker's preference on what they're going to do with that. But, uh, you know, if nobody bought the team, it's mine. The, um... the type of breaks that are out there, you know, you have your high-end breaks. So a, uh, a case of, for example, uh, that case that I showed you before, Tops Tier 1, there's 12 boxes in a case, but there's only three cards in a pack. So um, odds are that not all 30 teams are going to get hits because you're going to have, you know, repeats on teams and sometimes you even get repeats on players the, the last break we did we had uh one of the boxes was a bowman jumbo box three hits in a box so we had the yankees had one hit we had the astros had oh that's the same guy so uh you know it's cool when it's a good guy at least you know if it's you know some common guy like uh we actually had two brady lales come in another another break but um you know, not not necessarily everybody's going to get a hit, uh, especially especially when you're doing just a, a high end break or a very simple break that doesn't have a lot of hits altogether. Uh, mid end stuff is probably the best stuff for most collectors to get into. Um, there are breakers out there who break low end stuff. Usually they'll mix it in with other stuff, so they'll do a little bit of a little bit of all three. A little, uh, a couple higher end boxes, maybe not super high end, you know, like a flawless or an immaculate. But I know I personally, I don't go crazy with the high end stuff. But tier one, strata, um, spectra for football might be, you know, pushing the envelope a little bit um, for me. But uh, you know, that's what I personally usually go for as far as your high end boxes. But I like to mix it in with some mid end stuff. Uh, you know, for baseball, like um, like the Bowman Jumbo. I mean, the the price blew up on that when that came out, but uh, um, that was intended as a as a mid end box. You know, Topps Jumbos. So your hobby box, I would consider a low end. There's one hit, and it's an autograph or a relic. But at least with the Jumbos, not only do you get a ton of cards, you're gonna get more inserts, and you're gonna get uh, three hits per box instead of one. And one of them's definitely gonna be an autograph. Um, you know, when you're doing a break, you are looking for things that are going to get your hits. Um, one of the reasons why, uh, Clear Vision in its first year for, uh, 2015 Clear Vision football was such a bust was it was one hit per box. I think there were six packs in a box, so it wasn't like no cards, but you know, there it wasn't a lot. There was like, I think five or six packs, four cards per pack. But there was one hit per box, and only one of those hits was an autograph per inner case. So that means an inner case for that set was nine boxes. That means one out of nine boxes was going to have an autograph. The rest were all going to have relics. Some nice relics were, were in some of those, some real nice patches and stuff. But uh, um, let's just say the next year they did up it to two autographs per inner case just to uh, get a little more interest on that and make it a more breakable product. Um, breaking has kind of uh, evolved over the last few years, 
and um, now it's seen uh, less as a uh, nuisance where a lot of people manage ways to, uh, you know, like they would tape the break and then they would list it, but if they got something really good, you know, the, the you gotta you gotta try to get a streaming live. That's the best way to do it because that way, um, you know, you got you got that trust factor there where what you see is what you're getting right now. Um, what does a break look like? Most people, you see their hands. They'll either use like a GoPro helmet, or they will um, they will have their their camera set so that it's kind of facing down on, on an angle. So like, uh, let's try to do this without making a mess here. So like, you would see the cards like that, right? Oh, you see my notes. I shot this once without notes and then I was kind of jumping around, so. Um, or I like to do it where you always see the cards. Like, you know, you don't want to open the pack Oh, that was a good one. Uh, I got another pack over here. Now you want to you want to see the cards at all times. So that's why most people you'll see their hands. Uh, me, I like to I like eye contact. I like to be you know kind of face to face. I guess that's why I decided to do this segment in the first place. So just something extra to uh, <coughs> to interact with uh, you know my uh, my my peeps. Um, so then. You know, this is opening day. This is obviously a low-end set, but um, say you're doing like a tops jumbo, they might just take all the base cards and go right to the inserts. Um, I ship all cards, and I show all cards. If we're doing it where the cards show up over and over again, then I'm going to flip through them real fast, but I want to make sure that they, they do show up on the camera because you know what? Even if it's a base card, you know, you got, the, you got that kid who, who daddy bought him into the break, and he wants to know that he got three Kenta Maeda rookies um, and not just one. You know what I mean? So, you know, they'll show off the cards. And it's like, oh, my God, look at that card. And it's like, uh, yeah, Michael Young autograph. It's, okay. Um, Matt Kemp. Yeah. So, you know, they'll go through. Ooh, this one is, like, cool. It's, like, 3D. So, you know, they'll show you the cards and stuff like that. I'm the type of guy when I'm doing a break. I, I, I'm a little chatty, I'll admit it. You know what? You're paying good money for these cards. And you may not get good cards. So at least I'm going to give you a show out of it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you go to the movies, you spend $15, you watch the movie. You end up having to go buy it again on DVD. At least, you know, when you're watching one of my breaks, um, I'll, I'll try to give you your uh, your money's worth. And, and you still get your cards, too. So that's, that's great. Um what san diego oh no sorry that's the wrong list um so how do you watch these breaks well there's numerous platforms that you're able to watch them uh right now i am uh filming this streaming this live on live stream and uh then i'm going to upload it to youtube so youtube's another uh way to do it youtube has the live channel capability now as well uh ustream was a popular one um breakers tv uh, that's that's also a big one. Uh, Twitch is starting to become a very popular one. Uh, that's actually a gaming channel where people would film themselves doing uh, games. So either video games or or even, uh, you know, those nerd shop type games like, you know, Magic the Gathering. You know, okay, I used to play that. But I don't do Pokemon Go. Um, even Facebook, now that Facebook has that, you know, uh, going live capability... Uh, it's just uh, one of the many ways where you can watch somebody um, as they do a break. Is a break a good way to make a profit? Oh, that's that's a good question. Uh, well, uh, I said earlier, you got to compare it to buying a box or a pack. Um, you buy a box or you buy a pack of cards, you open it up, and uh, either something's in there or it's not. Well, that's pretty much the same way it is with a break because you're doing the same thing. It's the same cards. Come on. Um, uh, but you got, you got a little bit of a division now. I can't pay $1,500 for a box of Flawless. And if I buy a $1,500 box of Flawless and I get $200 worth of cards, if that, I'm going to be really unhappy. Or 
Or I can go into this break where the guy's got it. Let's see, there's 30 teams. Um, so you're talking like $50, $55 a team. Um, okay, so I'll spend $55. I might get nothing, but I'm not spending $1,500 and getting $200. So I'm not losing $1,300, but I might lose my $55. Bucks. Um, or if you do a random, some of the random breaks, you know, like I, I've tried doing them before. I've done a break where it was random number and you drafted your team. That's kind of almost like pick your team, but somebody might pick it before you kind of deal. Um, that would be a gimmick break too. And I've seen other, other people do something similar to that as well. Um, but if you do pick your team, right so random it's a gamble but you can flip good cards out of it or if you lose you're not losing the whole kit and caboodle you're just losing a little bit pick your team is great for PC collectors especially if it's a set where there's a lot of cards in it um, you know like your mid-end sets or or like a Bowman Jumbo you know one of the things that uh, that I just got sitting around here right now um, you're going to get your prospect cards, you're going to get your chrome cards. This is a good way where instead of buying a whole bunch of packs, you're going to get all the players you want from your team, and you're probably going to end up with the whole team set. And if you're lucky, you'll pull something like this, and he'll have a friend. And if you're not, you'll still get the cards, you'll still be happy, and, uh, and hopefully you've supported one of your, uh, you know, your local card shop guys or, or, um, or your local, or your, uh, you know, your uh, third-party um, online breakers. Um, you know, let's face it. You go, you go to Target. There's people. They're they're doing not very nice things to a pack. If they were doing that to a child, they'd be in jail. Let's face it. And uh, and they're taking your hits. Um, you know, generally a reputable breaker is going to break all hobby stuff. And, uh, you know, the seal's still on it, and you rip it open, and you're going to see everything. Um, now, if you're a set builder, you know, you, you, you're not going to get all the teams. So, I mean, unless you do 26, 30, 32 different breaks, and, and they're all pick your team. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be hard to, to build your sets that way. Um, how do prices get figured out? Well, uh, we kind of went into that a little bit before. Um, hey, most breakers, they're, they're not doing it 100% uh, out of the kindness of their heart. Um, you know, I love the hobby. The way I do business, I do it in the way that's going to be most beneficial to the hobby. Um, you know, I throw people things, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, oh, you busted out and you had like three good teams and all of them blew out. You know what? I'm going to give you a, a credit to the next break or something like that. But, uh, you know, there's there's this marginal thing called profit. And, and most of us are looking for at least a little bit. I'm not looking for a huge amount. You know, I'll be happy if I make like, a, you know, you do two to four breaks and, and, and you know, get, get a little bit for myself. Um, but, uh as far as like how do you set the price well you know you, you, random's easy you just what's your markup what's your shipping cost and that's how they figure out the price pick your team is a little more complicated uh, some guys will look at uh, you know other people's sites and, and steal their prices which is not cool uh, I only see that because I've seen people do that before that it was eerie similar to mine uh, except for everything was a dollar cheaper jerk uh, <laughs> And then, uh, and then what it is, is you're looking at, you know, again, what I was saying before about where these players are going to come up and, uh, you know, everybody's different. Some breakers will be like, well, I got a guy that gets this team every time. Um, so, you know, even though the Padres are terrible, uh, I got my friend in San Diego, so I'm just going to bump that. Now, nah, you know what, the way I do it is very mathematical very time consuming um, but very mathematical and uh, I like to um, to have it to where you are at the, the percentage of potential money value that is in that box that is what you're you're paying so hopefully I mean let's face it if every box you opened up was going to be a winner Donald Trump would buy all of them and he would take 
all the empties, and he would just build a wall around our country. But he would let the Dominicans and the Cubans in if they could hit home runs or throw 100 miles an hour. And then the other ones would get exp um, extradition back to their country. Um, but anyway, uh, so, you know, it's always going to be you're taking that calculated risk just like when you buy a box yourself, just like when you buy a pack, you know, in a store. Um, but you're going to get all of that one team um, or multiple teams, which we do offer a multiple team discount, by the way. Come on, you know you're looking to do your first break here. Um, a lot of breakers will throw in a uh, little bit of incentive. They'll do some freebies. Um, a lot of times they'll do it, especially with uh, distributor-supported programs. Like, for example, the distributor I buy from, if you buy, uh, I think, $1,750 worth of product out of this certain list, then you will get, um, you know, one of three different autographed jerseys for free. So you can either, you know, some guys will sell the jersey, and other guys will... Um, give it away to try to advertise themselves and other guys will throw it in their break if you're in this break and you don't get any hits uh or or if you get so many teams in this break you'll get a spot in a, in a, a random uh and will uh somebody will get raffled off this jersey you know um memorabilia is often used as a bonus for a break or you can do like i do and you can get boxes, blind boxes of memorabilia. I throw it in the break. Um, we just did two, uh, two of these Fanatics under wraps baseballs, and, uh, you know, some good stuff can come out of them. Got a nice uh, inscribed Jim Palmer ball. They got, in this particular set, like 24 karat gold-plated balls with, uh, yeah, that doesn't sound too good, does it? With, like, Cal Ripken Jr. and, you know, big, you know, big names uh, in there. Uh, only one in every 350 boxes, but, you know, hey, that's, that's the way it goes. Um, so, I guess the last question we have to ask is, uh, is a break for me? And the answer is, I have no clue. Um, you know, if you're a very specific collector, uh, I only collect um, Robin Ventura cards. Um, I have all the ones from the 90s. And the, and the, you know up to the end of his career so uh, you know well, well that's really specific so like maybe he's a fan favorite in archives or something like that and um, he's um, you know he's something that you just you just go out and buy the card I mean you don't need to buy packs boxes or box breaks you just need to find that specific player you like and uh, do that set builders I'm looking to complete every top set. I've done it since 1952, and I'm going to complete the 2016 set. Well, you know what? Then I guess it really doesn't matter if somebody pack searched you at Target or Walmart. You're just looking to do this to kill some time. Hey, have some fun. Buy a box. Go, you know, go buy a retail box. Go buy a hobby box, uh, you know, a jumbo preferably, and knock yourself out. If you're looking to build a set, um, breaking is not the way to do it because it is going to be extremely difficult. Uh, hey, those guys who, uh, hey, even though the odds are against you, probably only about one out of ten actually, uh, you know, manages to profit out of, uh, you know, busting stuff and being extremely lucky. Um, but, uh, hey, you know, random breaks are probably for you. You're, you're high risk, high reward kind of guy. You're going to look for the uh, high-end set. You're going to probably fall flat on your face a bunch of times. And then you're going to be in the flawless case. And you're going to get a uh, cut signature one-on-one -on -one Babe Ruth auto that's going to go for like eight grand on eBay. And, uh, yeah, it's going to feed your habit for probably the next year or so. Um, investing wisely is pretty much just as risky as doing a break. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, I bought 500 rookie cards of uh, two players one year. One of those guys is, was Mike Trout. I got him at 75 cents a piece, cashed out at five bucks a piece. Man, every time I tell that story, I want to kick myself in the behind. But still, you know, you look at some of the the past players, Todd Van Poppels and Kevin Mosses, if you're you're my age, um, who just like totally busted. Um, 
when you see that you're getting more than five times the value of what you paid for it, that's a good investment right there. Um, unless you think that guy's going to be a Hall of Famer like Mike Trout, then <laughs> maybe you hold on to them. Um, meanwhile, you can get, you know, 500 of um, Brandon Beachy, and it uh, doesn't end out so peachy. Um, so, again, there's always that risk. There's that risk with all trading cards. There's that risk with the stock market. You walk out the front door, and you could get struck by lightning. There, there's a risk to everything in life. And uh, that's just the same. But, uh, you know, if you're trying to flip cards, um, that's the risk you take. You just got to be smart. You got to look for either pick your team breaks where somebody didn't do their homework and, and there's, a, there's a couple good guys to flip out there that, uh, that they didn't notice. Or you just hope you get lucky. Now, if you're a team guy, well, that's the best way to get cards from players from your favorite team, especially if you're doing pick your team break. So if you're a guy that collects, uh, you know, say, uh, oh, what's a really good team? Uh, say you collect the Phillies. <laughs> um, say you're a Phillies collector. Well, you can buy a bunch of Phillies cards, but that, that's just not quite so fun, and, and you're kind of paying at least what they're worth at the time for it. Uh, you want to spice things up a little bit. You know, you get in these breaks, and you're going to get your, your, you know, your fill of your base cards that you, that you were going to pay 5, 10, 25 cents for uh, anyway. Um, but you just might get lucky. You might get that, you know, that Aaron Nola rookie autograph numbered to five uh, or something that, you know, you're drooling over it on eBay, and you know you can't get it, but you paid 20 bucks to get in a break, and, and hey, you, you got something good. Um, you know, I... I Again, some guys get lucky. I got one guy who uh, continuously gets, uh, you know, one team over and over again. And, and, I mean, the luck that he's gotten, you know, crazy triple thread rookie autographs and, and Hall of Fame autographs numbered out of five. Hey, you know what? That's the way it goes sometimes. And, and, and other times it doesn't. Um, usually if you break for the first time and you get a dud, um, that might discourage some people. Um Hey, if you're looking for a fun time, uh, definitely the breaks are the way to go. Uh, you know what? Uh, they're great for all ages. You know, older collectors, um, you know, they, they like, uh, you know, getting in, you know, like those archive breaks or things like that where they got, you know, oh, I got a, you know, Roberto Clemente or something like that. You know, the, the, the 90s guys that collected like, like me, 80s, 90s guys, um, you know, we're we're still on on the uh, thing and 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 how about the kids? I've done box break birthday parties, all right, and uh, and you know they're a fun time and uh, usually the kids are the most appreciative because uh, especially they're getting all those base cards, man. The, you know, oh, I got Joey Votto. You know, mo you know most guys my age would have been like, oh yeah, Joey Votto. Yeah, you can. Oh, it's a parallel too. You can, I don't need that. Uh, you know, I do, uh, when I do Halloween at my house, I got one thing of candy and one hit a thing of cards, and, you know, a lot of these kids don't even collect, and they'll be like, oh, that's so cool, and, you know, they'll grab a candy, and they'll grab a card. Uh, that is what a box break is, so, uh, feel free to send me over some feedback. I would like to hear, uh, that is what a box break is, so, uh, feel free to send me over some feedback. I would like to hear this. So uh, feel free to send me over some feedback. I would like to hear this. So uh, feel free to send me over some feedback. I would like to hear